Hello there, Morella. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> this is Jamie Drummond for Good Food Revolution. I'm here with Morella Amato, and we are here in Trinity Bellwoods Park to speak about Morella's book, which has uh, just been launched, Beerology. Now, the name Beerology I've seen around for some time. I think it's a name that you trademarked a while back, is it not? Absolutely, yeah. It's the name of my company. I trademarked it in 2007. So, I've been going through your book, having quite good fun with it. But Yay. please tell us what um, actually inspired you to, to put a book together and what is it that you feel differentiates your book, Beerology, from the hundreds and hundreds of beer books out there? Well, this book for me is a natural extension of my work. So with Beerology since 2007, I have been doing guided tastings, talking to people about beer, trying to promote beer appreciation and encourage people to explore their own palate and find their own personal favorite beers or maybe the right beer for any given occasion. And so this book for me is an opportunity to reach a broader audience. And I think that my, my work doing the guided tastings has really informed the content and tone of the book in the sense that um, obviously when I'm doing guided tastings, I'm not talking at people, it's a dialogue. So um, just over the years, getting an idea of the kinds of questions that come up for someone who's maybe just approaching beer for the first time is feeling a little overwhelmed and um, it helped me inform how I break down the information and share it. So in terms of how this book is different, I think the focus of this book is really the consumer as well as the beer. As well as, uh, that's a as well as the beer that's in front of you right now. So in terms of, for example, how I presented the styles in the, cha in the various chapters, I'm sure you notice it's by flavor yes, as opposed yeah. to by region. So the idea being, you know, there's the refreshing brews chapter. So are you, is refreshing beer your thing? Or maybe are you in a mood for a refreshing beer right now? Well, here's a whole selection of beers, regardless of the region they're from or whether they're ales or lagers that will fit that bill. Of course, then I also explain whether they're ales or lagers and so forth. So the way it's presented. And the other thing that I feel differentiates this book is that it is, like all of my work, entirely brand neutral. So it really isn't about, these are the beers I think you should try. Right, or here right. are our beers to drink. That's, um, it's just not a, a model that I'm a fan of when it comes to um, transmitting information. And you know, there are many um, journalists out there whose job it is to just select beers for other people to try. But my work is really about getting people excited about beer and discovering their own palate and finding their own way to enjoy it. So that's why I've also included the games as well as the cocktails, as well, you know, a bunch of different fun ways that you can enjoy beer. And um, in the style chapters, I'm sure you'll also notice uh, the little, they're playful, but you know, this beer might be good for such and such an occasion. I did Just, enjoy the way that you categorized the beers, all of those different beer styles. I thought that was a, that was a really interesting way to come at uh, the world of beer. And you can see all of the different styles on the cover here. These are all the different the chapters Malibu's, that you can see here. Refreshing, captivating. It was actually quite striking, striking. Uh, visual aspect to the book as well. How did that come about? Well, the visual aspect, I have, uh, you know, the design team really to thank for that. Um, but the reason it came about, again, is part of my philosophy. I'm always brand neutral. And I, right, up, right off the top, said, you know, I don't want any beer logos in the book. Right, I see. And it didn't seem like a tall order when I mentioned it. And then I started looking at beer books, and it's impossible to avoid logos. Even if you're not talking about a specific beer and have that beer in the shot, I mean, taps have logos on them you go to a bar you know i have a couple of shots here that were taken in a bar there's logos on the wall your coasters have so logos the coasters glassware have logos. Yeah. <laughs> Every, the glassware has logos so that was sort of the challenge that the design team uh, was working with and i think they did really an excellent job with it and beyond that my goal just in terms of the tone of the book which i think they captured beautifully is that um i wanted it to be welcoming because, you know, I've studied beer extensively and, you know, I take it pretty seriously, but it's still beer. It's still just beer and I'm, I'm worried that, you know, it's going to start getting a little bit snooty around the edges and there's, there's no need for that. Drinking in the park. So, Morella, 
who do you see this book as being for? What type of demographic were you aiming for when you compiled it? Um, uh, this book for me was really for anyone who is curious about beer and has noticed the selection but is maybe feeling a little overwhelmed and would like to, would like to dive in. That's why it's called Everything You Need to Know to Enjoy Beer even more. Um, but it's also for, I think, for people who have been appreciating beer for a little while and just want to wrap their brains around it in a different way. And uh, it's interesting because I've been getting a lot of feedback from a range of people and even some seasoned homebrewers who are saying that they found a few helpful tips in oh, there. Great. And um, there are the charts in the back are, are very popular. And uh, it's it's interesting to me because when I wrote the book, I had that specific demographic my demographic in mind but um, the book comes from my experience with guided tastings and when I'm guiding a tasting invariably I have you know a whole handful of people who are not beer drinkers you know maybe they're wine drinkers and they're coming to check it out or they've come with someone and they they're really starting out and then in that same group I'll have a few people who are really hardcore and know a lot and so when I'm doing my talks I always try to make sure that I'm not losing people who are just getting into beer while still providing fun little tidbits for those who really are quite advanced and are, you know, are there to see if they can pick up something new and different. And I think inadvertently, that's how the book ended up being as well. Actually, the beer and the other chapter I'm really happy with is the beer and food pairing chapter, which is one that I think even people who are hardcore into beer will find helpful because um, I don't think there's really been another book that really breaks down beer and food pairing step by step. And I'd be curious to know what you think of it because I took my inspiration from the wine world and how I broke it down. I have to say of, of all the chapters, that was one that I was particularly impressed with. Um, I, I'm often asked to do kind of beer pairings and I'm not, I mean, I can, I can guess some of the generalizations there, but you were getting a little bit more specific and I actually, I have to say that I enjoyed that chapter. <laughs> now, Marilla, thank you very much for joining us in the park for a gorilla tasting session uh, with Good Food Revolution. And uh, we look forward to enjoying your book a little bit more, Beerology. Take care, Marilla.